Hey guys, my guest today is a fellow FNTP and one of my friends. Her name's Gretchen Sang. Hi, Gretchen. Hi. I'm so excited that you're here today. We are going to talk um, pretty much all things autoimmunity from somebody who has lots of experience. Um, Gretchen is a functional nutritional therapy practitioner. She's also a certified fit fitness nutrition specialist. She's certified in plant-based nutrition through Cornell University. She also had her own three and a half year journey as a vegan, and that informed her conclusion that in the end, consuming some high quality animal protein is really essential to long-term health. She's a wife and a mom. She works. Let's talk about really quickly, um, you being on a vegan diet and why you made the decision for yourself personally to, to come off of that. Well, interestingly, the reason why it even started is that years ago, I noticed that I'd eat dinner and in the morning I felt like it was still in my stomach. Mm -hmm. So knowing now what I know, it was a digestive problem, right? I just needed some extra HCL and some enzymes. Um, didn't know that then, just thought, oh, my body doesn't want meat anymore. So it stopped, you know, I stopped eating red meat and then I stopped eating pork and then chicken. And then fish was the last thing to go because I'm Norwegian and we grew up eating tons of fish, right? And then I just started thinking it was, I was feeling better. So that made me kind of think that was the right path. Yeah. Um, and then things started going wrong years later. I, I, like I said, I got training in it. I was doing it right, technically, like, quote, unquote, right. Um, sure. I was giving myself B12 shots. I was doing everything I should do to be a healthy vegan. Mm -hmm. And it just started to go downhill. Um, and then I think, yeah, like three and a half years in, food cravings started to come back for, um, it was first clams. I was at one of my favorite places where my parents lived where they had clam chowder that they made dairy free. It's just how they've always made it. And I love it. And I had that. And then I just went back in. And at this time I was going to a functional medicine doctor that was cool with me being vegan, was willing to work with it, but I had gotten on some digestive enzymes and all that. So I started feeling way better when I put the meat back in. Um, so I just, I don't think there is one diet that's right for yeah. everyone. Maybe it's possible for someone to be a healthy vegan. Mm -hmm. I just personally made the decision I won't work with someone who's vegan. There are other people in this space that maybe specialize in that more now and believe in that path a little bit more. Right. I want to see people get better faster. So I don't think you need to eat a ton of meat, but right. I think you do need to eat some high quality animal um, products just that's from my own experience and it's just what I've seen. So that's kind of where I want to go. And like I said, there's enough of us out there to go around if someone wants to explore that, but it's not for me. Yeah. I'm, I'm totally there with you. It's, it's always, it runs the gambit, you know, I, that, yeah. one of my favorite things is like, you know, from vegan to carnivore, there, right. there are healthy people that find and do it their own way but I think it's good to sort of just examine that, you know, kind of your own personal journey with that and, and why the, the change, yeah. um, when it comes to health journey, you have been through a, a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. let, let's touch on like a few of, um, just your, your diagnoses or your, your past health stuff. Um, you've had endometriosis. Mm -hmm. That right? one. Yeah, that was one that I, looking back, I think I'm the summer between fifth and sixth grade, I got really sick. Like, and this is a kid and I lost probably 20, 25 pounds, couldn't eat. I remember the moment it happened right. and like major hot flash enough that I like went into the bathroom, took all my clothes off. I was super hot. I just didn't feel good. And then it took a long time to get kind of okay. Mm -hmm. And it was right after my parents had brought home Togo sandwiches. They were one of my favorite things. And I ate that and something just went terribly wrong. And it took until I was about 20 to figure mm -hmm. out what was wrong. Now I know I'm celiac. So I think part of it was that. 
I think part of it was going through the hormonal shifts that we go through at between fifth and sixth grade. It kind of starts, right? Yeah. So maybe that was the start of my endometriosis yeah. coupled with celiac disease. And later I found out I had a Hashimoto. So I think it all maybe was just starting then. Um, but for years went through, we had Kaiser. My dad was a police officer. So we had Kaiser and I think it's gotten better now, but at the time it was very much the 10 to 15 minute appointment. There wasn't a lot of trying to figure out what was wrong. Yeah. Um, I can remember just by the end of that summer, I overheard them telling my mom that they thought it was possibly psychological. And I'm thinking, am I crazy? You know, as a kid, am I trying to be a drama queen? Because I'd had that suggested by some family members too. Um, I think a lot of us go through that. And then you do start to question, You're like, I don't think I am, but yeah. do I need to be the focus of attention? I kind of don't like it. So I don't think so. Yeah. Um, but we finally, my parents paid out of pocket for me to go see someone at Stanford. Mm -hmm. And he kind of is the first one that figured out what was going on. So I had surgery and he tested all sorts of hormones, all sorts of food allergies. And he's the one that first put nutrition on the radar for me. He's the one that said, you know, start researching this. Sugar does crazy things to your body. Um, dairy does crazy things to your body. So he just kind of started the path, maybe gave me a few articles. Mm -hmm. And I started just exploring different diet types because of what he suggested. Um, so yeah, he's the one that put the endometriosis and the Hashimoto's um, diagnosis is he's the one that figured those out. Celiac didn't come till much later, but he started me kind of figuring out what was going on with my body. And yeah. he's the first one that I felt believed me. Yeah. I can remember kind of, I'm not a big emotional crier. I cried in his office because I was like, holy cow, someone believes me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think that happens with a lot of people because the symptoms are just so numerous. Mm -hmm. and can be a, a lot of different things. And I, I love that he, you know, said to you, like, here are some things, here are some things that, that you should start researching. Um, what, once we're invested in it, uh -huh. you know, once we decide to kind of take that, that lead in it ourselves, people's results are so much different once they're Yeah, invested. he's the first one where I was like, I realized that, and it was because of him that I needed to take an active part in researching mm -hmm figuring out how to heal. I mean, Kaiser, their answer to me was you have IBS, which I'm like, okay, I do have bowel issues, but I don't think, you know, that's just the, I don't know what's wrong with you. And when I had bad cramps and all that, I can remember being like 15 or 16 and being in with this OB. And I said, you know, my cramps are pretty bad. And she goes, when do they start? And I said, like a week and a half to two weeks before my period. And she goes, well, then you should just probably start taking two Advil every two to three hours for the duration. And I'm thinking, I don't think that's the answer. Like, yeah. <laughs> even that young, I knew like that. I don't think so. Mm. So I didn't, I mean, when it got really bad, I took Advil, but of course, yeah, that was their answer for me. That's crazy. Right. So with you, you have actually a, an adopted daughter and did she not end up being diagnosed with celiac as well? She, um, I went, I had a functional medicine doctor that I went to after I adopted her. Cause I got after we adopted her. Cause I got really, really sick. Right, right. When we got back home, I had a kidney infection that went septic. I had a bladder infection when we were in China and just hadn't had one for years. And we were so busy with appointments with the consulate and all this that I just kind of ignored it. Yep. And by the time I got home, it was horrible, horrible. Mm -hmm. And my friend who owned a gym suggested, he was in a mastermind group with this doctor. And he suggested I go see her. And she had just finished her func functional medicine training. I thank God for her because yeah. he figured out some more layers of the puzzle, right? And... um she was doing some food allergy testing and I thought, you know what, I want to get my kids tested too. And my daughter just like lit up on so many different things. And she was probably, by the time I got her tested, she was probably like two. So I didn't test her right away. And 
sure. came up that she definitely should not have dairy, definitely should not have wheat. Um, so I just thought I was going to give it up with her in solidarity. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, this is going to be hard. So mom will do it with you. My husband and son are like, we're not doing that. I said, okay, I'll do it. And I felt so much better. Mm -hmm. I was like, wait, what's happening? And then what? I didn't know immediately. Cause with me, things don't show up on allergy tests. My IG, secretory IgA is so depressed that it won't mount a response. So I'm the one that gets the test back and like, there's no way I'm okay with everything. And the doctors are like, we never see, she's like, I never see anyone that's fine with everything. So something's wrong with you. And I think at the time she didn't know about secretory IgA. I didn't know about it. I found out about that later. And that's why, I mean, I even paid for like the Cyrex array 10 years later and nothing shows up. And the doctor's like, nothing never shows up on these tests, you know? Mm -hmm. But I've also done genetic testing and I said, well, to my current um, practitioner, should I have the biopsy? And she goes, no, we know you can't have it. We've seen the genetic tests that show you have the SNP or whatever it is, the mm -hmm. gene mutation. And when you eat it, you get super sick. So she's like, you definitely have celiac. I'm never going to have you do the challenge test. No. I'm not really a proponent for that for people. I don't think there's a reason for it. Yeah, I, I think for a lot of people, it's simply just the matter of getting the diagnosis. So they their insurance will pay for X amount of stuff. But totally. Yeah, I, I've seen it several times that that, you know, you, that period while you're on it just wreaks absolute havoc. On she goes, it would ruin you. If you were, I was to put you on it right now, it would ruin you. She goes, we have enough information. We have the genetic information. We now I do have tests that, I mean, we've been able to increase or improve my IgA enough that it does mount a response. And it's like, no, no, we, you know, so it's just like, we know you have it. We don't need to do that. And she said, I will never not order a test that you need. I mean, most of the tests I get anyway, insurance wouldn't cover. Right. So yeah, not necessary, but thank goodness for my little lady, you know, and I, it's just funny how things work. Yeah. It, it really just kind of comes out the way that it, that it was, you know, supposed to or whatever. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I hear you there. Um, what made you decide to do the, the NTA course? I think it's just, I've done so many courses and so many certifications and none of them completely resonated with me. I, learn certain things and go, okay, I'm going to learn this for the test. I'm going to learn it the way they want me to, but I don't really agree with this. Mm -hmm. And I can't even remember. I think it was maybe Sean Miner that I used to follow, or I started following some other NTPs and just, it all seemed to make sense. And I, I probably researched and would go on the NTA website for a couple of years before I actually did it. And I think we were the first Boise class, right? I, th I think we might have been. I think we were the first Boise class because I would look at it and think, okay, I've looked at all the textbook material. I would get deep in the website, like what's the curriculum? What are they reading? You know, and I'd start reading some of those books. And then I started following a lot of other NTPs. And something popped up, some email, I think I got on their list and it said they were going to have a Boise class because with my kids being young, I don't like leaving my kids. I mean, my youngest was 14 and I had to leave last week. I still don't like that. I know she's old enough to be fine without me. I don't want to give up time with them. Sure. And once I saw that it was in Boise, I was like, okay, I think this means I need to do it. Mm -hmm. And I've never been through another certification course where, I mean, it just all made sense to me. It wasn't, you know what I mean? Yep. I could read more and learn more and it would make more sense versus yep. me having to go, I don't, I don't agree with that. That doesn't make sense. So what they've done, I think is amazing. I will sing the praises of the NTA. It's the end of the earth. It's the course was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, it helped me. I know it helped you. It helped my family. It's and yeah, I loved being a group leader. I love, I love the whole community. Yeah. Yeah, they really they're 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 not at all exaggerating when they say that you found your tribe. 
Totally. And I also like the fact that I feel like they're an organization that is willing to change their stance at some point or any point if they feel like new information comes out. Yep. It's not this like stuck in stone. This is the curriculum. They change it every year as far as like the books that are required and things like that. So it's continually evolving. And I feel like we get to evolve with them and especially with the way that they're going to be, you know, that they're working on things. Now we're going to have access to all that evolution. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. a really good organization. Yeah. I, I love having access to the new learning. That that's one of my, one of my things that I've been pretty excited about. Um, yeah, I need to be better about going on there <laughs> <laughs> to actually do it because you get busy with your own practice and your own stuff. Um, yeah, totally true. But totally true. it's there yeah. for us. Speaking of your practice, what's one of the things that you see the, the most with people coming to you? I don't think I've ever had a client that didn't have problems with their gut. Mm. Regardless of what their main quote unquote problem that they came to me for was, I've seen people, obviously a lot of autoimmune, like just autoimmune diseases in general, but skin issues, mm -hmm. um, Early onset Alzheimer's is another one that I've been working on. Uh, they all have problems with their gut. One thing that I've seen is that it seems like, I'm like, gosh, I'm not getting very creative on these things because we all start the same way. It's always the gut. Yeah. Um, it's our food supply right now. It's the way we eat, but we all have guts that need healing. Yeah. I, so that's the absolute crossover for every client I've had ever had so far. Yeah. I think that there's like a huge reason that they, they have the foundations that they do and that they start with, with the food and digestion, because it's, it's almost, you just like, can't go wrong. No, like, you could be eating food. the best diet. And like they say, it's not about what you eat. It's about what you absorb. Yeah. Those guts aren't absorbing what they need to be absorbing. I mean, yeah. I, I, you and I eat very well, right? I'm not saying I'm perfect, yeah. but I eat well. I take the supplements I should. And I recently come across the fact that I have parasites mm -hmm. and I've been getting rid of those because there's certain blood tests where you go, why is my B12 so low? I take tons of B12. Why is my protein level so low? I've had other critters in there eating yeah. my food. Yeah. That's so gross and so neat at yeah. the same time. Yeah. And I, I think that that's a good point to, to kind of go over. Like I was really strict, just like AIP, right. For about mm -hmm. a year and a half. Mm -hmm. and, Me too. Yeah. And I, I saw really good results when I first, when I first went on it and then it was just kind of that, you know, Hey, I, I haven't remediated this, um, you know, just like eating on the go and I'm, and I'm all, stressed out and doing whatever. And so I wasn't getting the nutrients from the food that I was eating. And so, you know, there was just like still that, that fatigue and the weight loss and all that other kind of stuff that came with it. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So gut, absolutely. Everyone. Have you seen anyone that doesn't have gut issues? Uh, no, I've, I've seen people who don't, don't really want to believe that that's kind of the, the main way to go. Right. You know, there are definitely different schools of thought, like the importance level varies with people according mm -hmm. to, to kind of whether, whether it's a level of understanding or a level of um, what they think they can do or are willing to do. But yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and I try really hard to educate people that there are certain, as far as supplements just go in general, that mm -hmm. it's going to be heavier at first. And there are certain supplements, in my opinion, that people with autoimmune disease are always going to have to be on. Mm -hmm. um, we just don't tend to have digestive systems that function as well as they should. Um, but my goal is to get someone on as few as possible. And I've seen my younger clients tend to be able to really bring down those hydrozymes a lot faster than those mm -hmm. of us that are maybe a little bit older because it's like yeah. it kickstarts it. It's their systems start working well once we can heal the gut and all that. But yeah, there's certain things that you're just going to have to take with autoimmune diseases. I'm so glad you said that. L let's unpack that for a second. The, those things that you see in autoimmune in general, because a lot of people are like, okay, so if I do this, this, and this, you know, then, then my gut gets healed and I'm done. 
like you know they, they want to just like do do the protocol and their gut gets healed so they stop reacting to all the foods and and then they're finished i i look in a perfect world that's how i would love to see it sure. i don't know that that's possible for everyone i think that there's a certain level of maintenance we're always going to have to do for the rest mm -hmm. of our lives yeah but that's so easy compared to the healing yeah. right so mm -hmm. yeah in a perfect world yeah there are certain things that i can almost say everyone with autoimmune disease i would like to see happen I would like to see them get off gluten. I don't think you should ever have gluten. Whether you have celiac or not, there is something that that triggers in our body when we have autoimmune disease. Yeah. I just, you want to get those highly inflammatory foods out. Gluten and dairy are the ones for me that I get every single person that comes to me with autoimmune eventually off of. People tend to have a lot more difficulty with the dairy. Yeah. It's those op opioid, you know, things that are in yeah. the cheese, especially. Um, those are the two things that they need to get off on, and we need, uh, and we need to get them on digestive support. Um, I've had people be able to put in a little bit of dairy, like maybe some high quality feta or parmesan, yeah, or goat cheese. But I, I haven't been able to see anything else in there. Now, my autoimmune um, clients that have skin issues, re the dairy doesn't tend to work. Right. You know, that's something about that skin component really gets triggered by even the smallest amount of dairy. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, there's, there's also a lot of stuff that like masquerades as you know, people will think for a long time, they're like, okay, well, th this is what I have or whatever. Like, like with me, it was, it was Lyme disease. And I, I'm in sort of the same realm as, as you are in that I was never like medically diagnosed with it. Mm -hmm. I, the, the, all the practitioners I went to, they're like, yeah, you, you've got all of the symptoms and there's, you know, like, Hey, we have spirochetes in your blood and the dark field microscope or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was just a matter of, um, of knowing that I wasn't going to go the traditional route with it anyway. So mm -hmm. I had no desire to, to go through the battery of tests that it was going to take to, to get me the, the official, yeah. um, diagnosis. So in that, in that masquerading part where, what things do you see show up where, you know, people are like, well, I, I have this and I have that. And they do because an autoimmune people, we tend to have like layers of diagnoses because once the body starts to, you know, kind of go after this tissue or that, you end up with multiple. Yeah. 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 And I've got some younger, like early college clients right now that have autoimmune. Yes. Um, one of them I'm trying to think what her initial thing coming to me was. She brought me some blood work. And she just, she knew that there was a lot of autoimmune issues in her family. Her mom is so wise and has brought her daughters to me um, to kind of set them on the right path. And she's trying to avoid having some bigger autoimmune problems later. Yeah. So one of them brought me their blood work and I was looking at it. And again, we don't diagnose. Let me make that perfectly clear. I made it perfectly clear to her, but I was looking at her blood work and I went, how have you not been diagnosed as celiac? And she looked at me and goes, well, I went to the doctor. They ordered all these tests. And I said, the same doctor ordered all these tests for you? She goes, yeah. And they went over them. And I'm looking at it and going, everything indicated to me that I can't even remember what the specifics were, but you have celiac. She called me like, I said, why don't you go in? Because you can go to your health center and have them order some blood tests for you. And she called me like two or three days later crying because she had celiac disease. So there's little things we can pick up on where we can then, you know, okay, go to your provider. How, we can suggest certain tests for them. Um, and, but she also has adrenal issues. You know, I mean, in, in general, those of us with, not even those of us with just autoimmune, most people that come to me have adrenal issues just living in the world that we're living in right now. Um, you just start to see certain signs of, you know, the cold hands, the constipation, the, 
so okay this might be heading towards a Hashimoto's type thing so let's take care of your gut let's take care of everything else and a lot of times those issues will go away mm -hmm. I'm still on the fence of exactly I mean I I know medicine doesn't know what causes all these autoimmune things I still don't know in my mind I don't know if it resonates with me that it's our body attacking itself something right. at least says that's not right I think they yeah. still need to figure it out I I really think it could be some of those viruses that are in our system that our body is attacking those molecular mimicry things so yes I just don't it, I can't think that our body attacks itself yeah, that, that's a hot button one. That's a hot button one for a lot of people. And I, I think it might be the, the medical medium guy who was just like, yeah, your, your body's smarter. Yeah, I heard it from him too. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, your body's smarter than that. He knows better or knows better than to, to do whatever. But the reason they're naming it, what they're naming it is because it, it is a tissue inside of your body that is being damaged by the immune system. A hundred percent. Yep. Yep. So, it's a confusing. Yes set of things happening in our body and same thing as that uh you know doctor told you i just always encourage people to to do their own reading and their research and even when it comes to what i'm saying to them not yeah. to just you know take take everything as as gospel truth you know i don't know everything and your body is going to do very different things than my body so right. which by the way i do have all those books yeah I, I have way too many health books. I can't say I've read them all cover to cover, but I also think there's something to someone doing their own research and seeing what resonates with them. And I'm a big believer in trying to listen to your intuition and what you think works for you. I think down the line soon, I'm probably going to do a liver cleanse myself. I've read the book. I've bought everything for it and I haven't done it yet. Something in my body is just not ready for it yet. And I'm, I'm going to know when it's time and then I'll do it. So I think we need to listen to ourselves that way. Yeah. I, that's one of my favorite things, honestly, about that we have the knack. Mm -hmm. because it, it's completely based on, you know, like symptomatic, like how are our symptoms expressing themselves? How are we functioning on a regular basis? Like you said, or like with me, you do some tests and they'll come back normal or, you know, that you're looking for a specific thing and they're like, eh, your, your numbers for this are fine. But everything you have going on inside of you indicates that you're not fine. Yeah, no, I absolutely love the knack. And you and I were talking earlier about how, oh, how, how <laughs> we both spend way too much time preparing for our clients. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's because we absolutely geek out on this and we care about it, right? Um, but I love going through every single, number three on the knack. Yeah. And I will put them all in one document and I print it out and I sit down and I read every single thing. I mean, now I cut and paste for every three and I put together a document for each client that comes through and I will sit down and read through it. You see so much overlap. It makes everything so clear on where you should start. Yeah. You know, and I will ask my clients, how much do you want to learn about your body? What's going on? Do you want me to just tell you what to do? make or not tell you make suggestions let me make that clear make suggestions on what you could do do you want to learn about this and i have a lot of clients that want to learn about it so um but you see a lot of overlap and i always make clear that they understand this doesn't mean you have this or this is what's going on this just means you have these symptoms that are overlapping that are possibly causing issues within your body yeah. And then I think it also gives them more buy-in to follow our recommendations because they go, okay, they really have put their time in to try to investigate what's going on with my body. So yeah. it's more likely that these changes will elicit a response that's positive, you know? Yeah. I love, I love the, the signs and symptoms book. It's, it's literally- I get it out all the time. Yep. It's one of my favorite things to go through. Um, just in case anybody wants to know what we're talking about, it's um, signs and symptoms from a functional perspective. <laughs> Yeah, Gretchen probably. Mine's totally behind it. <laughs> it is within arm's reach. I know, I know, and I and I'm the same because you you just like yeah, literally pulling from it all the time, and I I totally respect where he's coming from with that because when you go to um like a conventional practitioner, that's what most people are after in the first place is symptom management, but yes, usually they're doing it from a perspective of um you know, Hey, maybe you can, 
yeah, hey, you can make a couple of changes, but what we're going to do is we're going to prescribe you something. And, you know, same thing, just to be clear, we don't prescribe anything. We make nutritional recommendations yep. based, on, based on your symptoms, like the whole, and man, the knack has a lot of questions. That thing is thorough. <laughs> yes. You know, so it, it makes this like cluster of symptoms and creates this awesome little graph for us so we can look at it and say, okay, according to what, how you feel right now and what your goals are over here, here's what we're going to try. Yeah, it shows us your hot buttons, what's really high on the graph. And yeah. it is so fun over time to show clients how their graph that was up here is now yeah. like down here, right? Because I think people tend to forget what they were experiencing when they first come to us. Really so it is really important to, and we do this too, right? It's really important to go back and look at what those symptoms were when you initially came and to see how far you've come mm -hmm. because we kind of forget what we used to feel like. Yeah. I have to make myself do a knack every so often. It was kind of like, like with my, with my blood testing, I was, I was like, man, I haven't looked at my food intolerance list for a long time. And then yeah. this other stuff happens and I'm like, oh, probably should have done that a few months ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know we look, we've been <laughs> clients ourselves. Yeah. And we, yeah. Yeah. We're not perfect. Yeah. Nobody is. And I, and I love, I love that. I love that about you. And I love that about a, a bunch of our other friends that, that will just like say, okay, look, do I know some of this stuff? Have I taken this certification? Yes. But these are my struggles. You know, the, uh -huh. don't think it's a journey. It's a total journey. I, I don't. And it's giving yourself grace. I mean, this is totally off topic, but my oldest went off to college this year and I knew I was going to miss him tremendously. Yeah. I gave myself a few months grace in the rains and not worry as much about what I was eating. I never went crazy, yeah. but I kind of let myself be sad and eat when I wasn't hungry and, you know, <laughs> kind yeah. of give myself a little bit more of those nourishing foods that maybe in, in general, I wouldn't eat as much of, but I mean, nourishing as in like what you would eat growing up. Yeah, but again, yeah, I never went crazy with yeah. it, but that was part of my process. And I knew going into it, I'm going to be kind of sad. This is kind of sometimes how I deal with sadness. Maybe it's not the best way to deal with sadness, mm -hmm. but it's going to make me feel more comfortable. Yeah. So walk, walk people through um, kind of what, what it looks like when they come to see you. What should they expect? I have a rule I have learned. I do not put any work into a client until they have paid for that initial appointment because I put so much work into it before I meet with them. Yeah. I easily spend minimum four hours on someone um, before I even see them. I have so done that before. you pay your invoice and then I send out a slew of questionnaires, which I'm sure the same as you. I tend, um, I happen to use the practice management software, Practice Better. So I put a lot of my forms on there. Um, <laughs> You fill that out and then you fill out, um, I need seven days of food logs. I've had people, you know, try to do just three and I really insist on the seven because I think people eat differently on the weekend and they are during the week and, you know, there's travel involved sometimes, but that's another thing off topic. People tend to think, I don't want to fill it out this week because I'm traveling and that's not typical. It tends to still be typical because that is your life. People who travel for work travel all the time. So, yeah. you know. Um, and then you fill out the nutritional assessment questionnaire. Um, you get all the paperwork to me and I have appointments booked enough in advance that I can book someone's appointment right when they come to me because I'm already like three weeks out anyway. You couldn't see me before then anyway. Yep. Um, so we book their appointment. They have to get their paperwork to me at least three business days prior to having an appointment so that I have that time to go through it. If they don't, we will reschedule. Um, but then we have our initial appointment usually lasts a good hour and a half. Um, this is after me putting that four to six hours of pre-work in. I have more questions for you when I meet with you. I want to talk through it. I want to, I've highlighted so many things where I want to go more in detail um, and learn about that. After that appointment, if you are local, then you come in and um, I'll make some initial recommendations for you but I, I want to be able to do a physical examination on you before 
we get deeply into those recommendations. So second of where we're touching points on your body and all of that to find how your body system is working, what you maybe have some imbalances in. And then we will do the lingual neural testing where we'll put a supplement on your tongue and it connects to your brain so we can figure out what supplement specifically will work for you for that organ system. Um, which is, I think, so key. If you happen to be local, game changer. Game it's changer. a game changer because there are, we can, we can know, okay, this one should work for you, but I have had clients come in where for their adrenals, I've had to try nine different combinations before I found the right one. Yeah. Right. So would the other things help? Sure. But not as quickly as that specific perfect thing for your body at that time. And it will change over time too. Yep. Maybe three, four months later, it's a different combination or we can take one of those out and it's just this thing instead of a combination. Um, and then after that, I like to see people. So I can do those first appointments within a week of each other. Usually I'll do two weeks to give them a chance to start whatever recommendation I had made prior. Um, but then I want to, I want to have follow-ups with people every month. So yeah. we do a follow-up appointment and sometimes they're 15 minutes, sometimes they're 70. So it depends yeah. on what's going on with the person at the time. And I always make myself available to my clients for, they can text me anytime with questions between our appointments. I don't want them waiting if something's going on. So we're, we're in communication. I get pretty involved. Yeah, we, we do. And I, I think it's, Part of it's just such an awesome thing because people haven't really had that experience before, you know, mm -hmm. like you're, you're in the office longer than you actually see your practitioner. And it's so completely flipped on its head. The, yeah. the, way, that, the way that we've, that we've learned to do appointments and especially most of us who are in this space have run the gambit with our own health issues, especially if you are dealing with autoimmune stuff, you know, you've been to a lot of people usually. Oh, so many people, so many people. That's why, I mean, I insist on having a PPO. I want to be able to see who I want to see, or it's, I mean, so much, all of us have spent so much of our own money on this, whether we've had insurance or not. So yes. we really respect other people's time and we know what it takes to try to pick up those loose ends and figure out what's going on with someone. Yeah. Fill in some of those missing pieces. So mm -hmm. Are you currently taking new clients? I do. Yeah. I communicate with people and I try to figure out who I think is really going to be bought in. I don't want to take a client that's not going to follow recommendations. I don't want someone to come until they are ready to change their life. You know, in the beginning, you're kind of like, you're excited and you want to help everybody. You kind of take everybody on and there, there really is a, a, a difference. I think we're in, we're in a pretty specific space, especially with the testing that we do. Uh -huh. And yep. uh, yep. there, there is night and day difference in, in the clients that are, are just bought in and will take and do, you know, the recommendations and nobody's a hundred percent, you know, no, no, life, I don't expect it. Yeah. Life gets in the way, finances get in the way, whatever. So nobody's a hundred percent, but it's literally, I know it's cliche to say, but it's like the, what you put in complaining yeah. about like, I can't do all these things that, that you're recommending. And I heard the doctor say, okay, so you don't think you have time for this? And he goes, no. And she goes, then you really don't have time to be sick. So, and that always stuck with me. Like you think this is a lot, yeah. try getting something really bad yeah. and how much work it's going to be to try to get out of that hole at that point. Yeah. So but people need to figure that out for themselves. And I know I've, we've been NTPs for what, two and a half years. I don't even know exactly. Yeah, I have to think. I think. Yeah. And I've been doing nutrition for at least 16. Mm. I've figured out who's ready and who's not. And at first I wanted to take on everyone that came to me. Yeah. And I just don't have the time to invest in someone that's not ready for it yet. And that's not a judgment on them because I have people contact me and they're not ready yet. And then in two years they are ready. Yeah. So no judgment. I'm sure you have that with friends too. Like I'll have a friend come and see me and they thought they were ready and they just weren't. And I'll eventually just have to have a conversation and be like, 
every time we go out to dinner, please don't think I'm looking at your plate and judging you. Yeah. I think we get that a lot. Like I'll be in the grocery store and people I'll see friends and they're like, don't look at my cart. I'm not going to judge you. That happened to me just like, just like two weeks ago, you know? Yes. I, I, I'm we're not, not I'm here not. for that. I know you and I are not that way. Like my eyes are on my cart. I'm not worried about yours. But if you ever want to come to me, it's fine. And if you come to me and you weren't ready and you're going to be ready in a year and a half, that's fine. So yeah. when we're out to dinner and you're having a beer, I'm not thinking bad thoughts about you. Even yeah. though I know you're celiac, not thinking bad thoughts for you. That's just you. You do you. Yeah. I, I get in that space myself. You know, it's like, like with the doing the, the testing and whatever, I had some pecans and uh -huh. I know I shouldn't eat nuts right now. Yeah. I, just, I just know that I shouldn't eat nuts right now. And it sounded good. And I ate it anyway, you know, yeah. but this is a human trait. It's a human trait. And I'll have clients come to me and go, I know I wasn't supposed to have dairy and I had it and I felt horrible. And I'll say, look, I've gone through it too. And I actually think that's an important part of the process. Yep. You need to feel horrible enough times that you don't yep. want to feel horrible again. Yep. So don't judge yourself. Just realize that's part of realizing, okay, I really can't have this. Right. And sometimes you can make the decision to go, it may be worth it. So yes. like when, when you're doing the, the functional exam and sometimes you'll, you know, you'll hit on a spot that's like really tender for somebody and they're like, oh, that's bad. Right. And I'm like, no, I like, don't judge it. We, we're gathering information. That, I that's actually think it's good. Doing. Yes. I mean, you know, clients will contact me sad about like that one sad that she had celiac. And I said, I, I don't want you, I understand that you're upset. I think you need to go through the weekend being upset and let yourself be upset. But I also want you to know this is really good news. You yeah. haven't felt well for a really long time. And yeah. now you know why. And now that you know why there's something you can do about it versus you and I who have had years, I've had over a I had over a decade where I didn't know what was wrong with me. Right. Mm -hmm. So I see these diagnoses or whatever as good news because we have a direction and we have a way to go. So hot points on the physical exam, good news because we can do something about it. Oh, uh, that's so fantastic. So where do people find you? Um, I totally need to work on my website. It's been there forever, but um, it's balanced ready, G R E T T I E.com. Or you can go to fitquestnutrition.com and it'll lead you there. And then you just look at the top and it'll say nutrition and all of that. I'm also on Instagram at fitquest underscore nutrition. Um, and you can come to me for all things on, you know, autoimmune, just health in general. Another little tidbit that we didn't get into, but there's tons of information on my Instagram is um, breast implant illness. I did go through explant. I have gone through that. So I have several clients that are going through the process and just want to know how to best support their body while they're waiting to get an explant. Um, and then afterwards, how to kind of get their selves back on the path to health after they've been removed. So lots of different little areas. That's so awesome. Yeah. That that's where you find that you're, you're, you're frustrating like that long. Uh, we're, we're just on such a journey with our health, everybody. And all of those things that, that you have been through are not just an experience for you anymore. They, yeah. they, are, uh, they are a help. And a lot of the times, honestly, an inspiration to other people because they're like, okay, this person has figured some things out and they can right. help me. You know, yeah, and you and I are continually evolving. I mean, before we jumped on today, we were talking about mindset and how that plays a role. And I mean, I'm continuing to learn about how my emotions and all of this have contributed oh, yeah. to my disease as well and how they can, I can change a few of those things and it can contribute to getting better. So, yeah. yep. Yep. I, I totally so much to unpack, huh? Holistic, holistic health. It's not one thing that made us sick. And it's not one thing that's going to make us better. Exactly. It's, it's a process and it, it takes a lot of time. It's not like, you know, the TV, like 30, 60 day results. Hey, I feel great now. So it's no, no, that can be a good start, but no. <laughs> sure. Sure. Oh, 
Thank you so much, Gretchen. You've given everybody a, like a, a lot of insight and just just so many things to to think about and research for themselves. So no problem. You. It's fun for me to talk to you anytime, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> I, I miss you. you. I just the same thing. I'm like I miss you. I do too. Thank you so much. No problem.